What is up guys and welcome back to another Wrath of the Lich King classic video. So today we're gonna be talking about gold farming and more specifically I'll be highlighting a couple of gold farms that you can do while leveling up in Wrath of the Lich King classic. Before we do that though I want to chat about gold farming in general and talk a little bit about that. So the first thing that I want to say here is that if you're looking to make the most gold possible then check out my gold guide. <laughs> okay never mind. <laughs> if you want to make as much gold as possible though you want to rush to max level you want to get to level 80 that is where the most gold is to make obviously like you can do more farms you can go back and do lower level farms more efficiently as well so by getting yourself to level 80 you're unlocking so many more possibilities within gold farming in general so the number one advice would always be to get to level 80 as soon as possible but I do understand that not everyone can take time off work and not everyone can or wants to play the game for 19 hours hours every single day just to rush level 80 to take advantage of well less populated zones less competition for gold farms and all of those things basically when you level 80 you can go to higher level zones where there's generally less people because not everyone is no life in the game so by getting to level 80 fast you can take advantage of gold farms that nobody else can the same thing happened in tbc where if you just rushed to level 70 and you rushed up your engineering you could farm gas clowns for a thousand gold per hour for the first one or two days before the gold per hour drastically went down to 500. So by getting to max level fast you can literally make twice as much as other people would. Okay uh, so with that being said let's talk about some gold farms that you can do while leveling because if you, if you can't rush level 80 and let's say you're playing three to four maybe five hours every single day it will take you a couple of days to get to level 80 and you might want to farm some gold while the materials are at peak value. So in this video I'll be highlighting my favorite farms to do while leveling up so you can do those as well. Now before we check that out though I do want to say that I have a lot more and better gold farms in my gold guide that you can check out through a link down below. This is a gold guide I've made specifically for Wrath Classic containing gold farms, investments, how to make gold professions, class specific gold farms, pretty much everything you want to know about gold farming should be in this guide and I'm continuously updating it as well and you will also get the updates for free after purchasing the guide. Additionally once you purchase the guide you will get access to a guide exclusive discord server with even more uh, gold making information the investments as well some of them have literally went up 15 to 20 times in price after making the guide so you can be sure rest assured that some of these investments are insanely profitable so if you're looking for investments gold farms or general gold making strategies and gold making methods check out that guide through the link down below okay now let's check out a couple of gold farms to do while leveling so based on where I'm standing right now, it, some of you might know where this is and you might be familiar with the farm, but it's located right here in the Howling Fjord. I am recording this on the beta right now before the game comes out, so I haven't really explored everything here. I just went straight to this farm right here. So. Here we are, we're farming in uh, Howling Fjord, I'm on a level 70 character, I could have made a level 80 pre-made, but I just copied over my character from TBC to the beta, so I can test this one out for you. On a level 70 character, so you can see exactly how easy this one is. So over here you will have level 69 elementals, these are basically lurker elementals, whatever you want to call them. So any class can farm here and you will make gold as any class. That being said, if you have herbalism, you will make even more. So as a quick example here, I can kill one mob just to try to give you an idea of what the loot is like. So let me just pull a couple. I, let me pull a couple instead of just killing one because I can just star fall and then you can see that roughly what kind of loot you can expect to get from the farm. The farm itself, itself is pretty easy as I said earlier in the video. So you can AoE them down, you can single target, doesn't really matter. If you do AoE like I'm doing right now, you might pull some of these guys, so keep that in mind. And uh, they are, they're flying above, so if you do Starfall like me, then yeah, chances are you might pull one or, one or two of these. It's fine though, and every now and then these spores will keep you in combat. Once again, that's fine by me. So here you can see the loot that I'm getting, some of them are selling for raw silvers. The add-ons aren't working on the beta right now, so I can't show you that part. But what I can show you is that after killing them and after looting them, you can gather them with herbalism. You can see that even without herbalism, you're getting grace, you're getting 
grey items, you're getting new weapons, like I just got a weapon that probably vendors for a couple of gold right here, the Dolshiv, and by gathering them with herbalism, you get even more herbalism stuff. So, two crystallized life from one loot, I got one from one loot as well, so you can potentially get three to four crystallized life from one mob here. So have herbalism, gather them like that, every now and then you just get a grey item as well, but you sometimes get a Northrend herb or a crystallized life. Now the one thing you want to get here is the crystallized life, like eternal lives will be insanely valuable in phase 1, even phase 2 as well really, but especially early on, these will be selling for a ton. So this farm right here, insanely valuable, you can do it as any class with any professions, but if you do have herbalism I want to say that it will probably be twice as efficient so definitely if you do have herbalism go and check this one out okay let's head on to farm number two Okay, so for farm number 2, we are now switching zones to the other side of Northrend, because the previous one was in Howling Fjord, but not everyone will be starting in Howling Fjord, some of you might be starting in Borean Tundra, so this one is in Borean Tundra, and over here we're pretty, pretty much combining two different farms into one farm together, so it's located all the way up here around Borgorok Outpost, right at the lake here. So over here you have a bunch of fire elementals and water elementals. So you can see water elementals, fire elementals, and they're fighting against each other as well. So you're obviously farming for crystallized water and crystallized fire. There's a bunch of these available. I, I don't know if they are connected to a quest, they probably are. But you can find tons of them up here, there's so many of them, and they will just keep on spawning. They are fighting each other, so sometimes you get them at low health as well, so you basically get some help by them fighting each other. It is the perfect farm for anyone without any specific professions, because no professions really help you out here. There's nothing that really helps you out, there's no gathering, nothing really. So just pull anything, the one thing is that you will have some mining veins around here, so if you do have mining, well, you have an additional reason to actually be here. But for the mobs themselves, there's no profession requirement, and having professions don't even ha enhance the farm at all. So here you will see two fire elementals fighting against one water elemental, and you can see there's a bunch of elementals available at this location. Even if you go down here, you will see even more elementals in the water as well. Tons of water elementals around the place, and fire elementals up here. The one thing to be aware of is, is that if you're playing a mage and you're a uh, frost mage, you don't want to AoE because your water spells won't be damaging the water elementals, and vice versa for fire mage and fire elementals. So keep that in mind if you're playing a specific class with a specific type of fire or water damage spell. But yeah, other than that, it's a very good farm, definitely worth testing out for both crystallized water and crystallized fire that will be turned into eternal life, uh, not eternal life, eternal water and eternal fire. Okay, this next farm is very low key and it's once again based on having herbalism. And you can combine this one by having skinning and herbalism, so if you have both of those, this one will be great for you. Either way, if you just have one of them, it will still be great. So we're looking at over here at the Ardent Stand. Right to the right of Ardent Stand, there is one quest at this location. But outside of those quests, like people don't usually go here. And a lot of people might choose to skip these quests as well, just to do the easy parts of this zone before moving on. So over here you have some mossy rampagers, and these are once again moss elementals that you can kill and gather with herbalism. So if you kill one of these, you can get a crystallized life, and you can get some northland herbs just by looting them, and then by having herbalism, you will get even more crystallized life, and even more northland herbs as well. So herbalism, twice as much loot from these guys, and you will also see there's a lot of beasts around here, so these crystal basilisks, they can be skinned, so you can kill these guys and skin them for additional loot and the chance of getting arctic fur. So if you have both skinning and herbalism, you can literally pull a multiple of these and AoE them down in huge and uh, in huge bursts. So right here you would have like a four pool, you have two basilisks, actually three basilisks and one of these guys, so a five mob pool right here, and then you just do the same around the entire lake. So you will have these guys running all the way up and down the lake, just clear out the lake, and they should start respawning. Alternatively, at the launch of Wrath, we will most likely have layers as well, so you can clear out layer 1, then jump to layer 2, just as an example. 
Next up, going back to basics, needing no professions, we have a Crystallized Fire slash Eternal Fire Farm. So you're looking for these guys right here, the Seeding Revenant. They are located at Fjorn's Anvil, all the way up here in the Storm Peaks. So all the way northeast in the Storm Peaks. You do technically need flying to get here. You, that being said though, when you do get to the zone, if you are level 76 plus and you don't have flying yet, you can go to K3, get yourself a borrowed flying mount, and then you can use that in Storm Peaks to fly yourself up here. So you can start farming here the second you get to level 76. That being said, they are level 80, so <laughs> keep that in mind. It might be difficult for you, but if you reach semi-high levels semi-fast you can start going here before people go here to do dailies yes these guys are connected to daily quests so this is a gold farm that will really be worth it if you get here fast but if you are here when people do dailies it might be difficult for you to get tags they are located right here at the end of it itself and all the way around to the east of Dunnanifilum so when I'm flying out here you can see there's one over here and there's a couple of them on the ice over here as well so literally just fly laps up and down and hunt for these guys, alternatively use a target macro, and you will find them all over the place. Be aware of these uh, big elite giants, they are very annoying and they, they, they deal tons of damage, so be aware of those. Okay, so those are quite, uh, those are four gold farms you can do while leveling up. Once again, my recommendation is always to get to max level, then start worrying about farming gold, but there is a huge argument to be made here, for if you can only farm a play for three to five hours every single day, you do want to farm some gold while the materials are in very high demand and they will be in very high demand the first week of wrath so by capitalizing on them being in huge demand you can make a bunch of gold while leveling up to level 80 you can literally smack two birds with one stone and farm a lot of gold and get some experience while doing it okay i hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like down below let me know about some other gold farms that you would like to see in this video in the comment section and subscribe to the channel for more Wrath of the Lich King classic content. I will be uploading a lot of gold farms as we move into Wrath, and I'll be streaming it as well, so if you want an early insight on which farms I'm personally doing, then follow me on Twitch, the link is down below. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Peace out.